Hello, my name is Dawn Colley. I'm the Education Officer at the Manx Wildlife Trust and today I'm going to talk to you about seals. Um, I'm going to produce uh, three different videos on seals and um, you can patch them in, watch them whenever you want, um, whatever's best to use if you want to use it with schools. So this first video is going to be about the anatomy of seals and their adaptation um, to their life. And I have brought along especially our taxidermy seal pup that belongs to the trust that M&H very kindly keep in storage for us. You can probably see that I'm wearing gloves because um, we don't know the full history of this specimen and they used to treat them with some quite toxic chemicals like arsenic so I obviously don't want to um, get anything so that's why I'm wearing the white gloves plus it keeps the specimen more pristine than having um, oils from my hands transfer to it. So um, what I'd like to do is just have a little general look at the whole body so you can have a little walk around and a look at the whole body of the um, seal pup and um, have a look at its shape and the different parts of its body. And whilst we're doing that, I'm going to just very quickly talk about taxidermy. Um, taxidermy obviously started off with the Egyptians. Um, they didn't use it in the sense that we have it now in that they preserved the whole of the specimen. Um, but it became popular really in the 18th century when um, explorers went to different countries and obviously they wanted to bring specimens back for people to look at and that's when they started to develop taxidermy. Um, there's a lot of talk about whether this is right or not, obviously, to have taxidermy specimen. This one is quite an old specimen, um, and I like to use it because I think it's good for people to have a good close-up look at seals and see their adaptation. Obviously, we wouldn't advocate that people would take specimens now and do taxidermy. There's a lot of specimens around that we can use and actually um, these are very useful in that they people um, scientists can still come back and take DNA samples from them so they're actually quite a valuable resource and a lot of museums have a lot of taxidermy specimens and also what we call skins which um, people can have access to to do research so taxidermy is really special like that so what we're going to do is we're going to start talking about the different parts of the body and looking really closely at them. So what we're going to do is have a look at the seal pup's head here and have a look at the adaptations for its lifestyle. So the first thing we're going to have a look at are these two lovely big eyes here. So first thing to know, it's the position of the eyes on the head. They're slightly to the sides. If they were like us, their eyes would be facing more forward, probably where the tips of my fingers are now, okay? What that does is by having their eyes set on the side of the head, their field of vision is a lot greater. That's how far around they can see. If they were just looking forward, they would have a flatter field of vision, so it'd be harder for them to catch their fish. You can probably see here, these are actually glass eyes, but they're lovely and glossy looking. Um, when you're swimming in the sea, your eyes get really prickly and sore because of the salt water, it really hurts you. So how do they get around that problem? Well, they have a mucus that covers their eyes and that reduces the contact of the salt water against the actual eye itself. That does mean when they come out on the land, that mucus is still constantly um, covering their eyes. And this is why seals have that very runny eye look when they're on the land. The eye shape itself is very, very round. So the lenses are very curved. This helps focus the light into the back of the eye. If you're swimming in the swimming pool and you dive down to the bottom, it's a lot easier to see the bottom in the shallow end, but the deeper and deeper you go, the less light there is. So these eyes you really have to pick up whatever light there is around and really focus them in. Okay, and they're almost a bit like mirrors as well. You know when you can get a mirror and you can focus the light down and shine the light down. It just drags more light into the eyes. So they have vision very like ours, but they're much better at seeing in those murky, darker conditions. Their eyes are important for them to see their prey, but not that 
um, important as we're going to find out a little bit later on when we have a little bit more detail about what else we can see on the face. So if we come down, you can see these two slots here. These are their nostrils. Okay, this is um, a common seal because of the way the nostril slots are orientated, if they were more at an angle apart, okay, they would be a grey seal. Now, you can see it's really closed up tight. You know yourself when you've dived in the water, the last thing you want is to get water up your nostrils. It makes you want to cough, it makes you want to breathe in. So by closing up those nostrils tight, it stops that water going down onto their lungs. And it's very important because seals can dive down and keep underwater for 30 minutes. We couldn't even manage a minute. I certainly couldn't before coughing and spluttering. And they have incredible body adaptation to be able to stay and remain under the water for that long. Part of that is this ability to close up their noses really tight. I'm going to show you also um, on this seal pup. We've got a seal pup skull here. Um, this is actually um, a grey seal pup. And if you look right down the nostril there, you can see lots and lots of like little holes there. Okay, they are um, tubinates, what we call tubinates, and they increase the surface area of skin available. And it has two purposes. So it increases the um, smell sense in them. And also it helps warm up the air as it goes into the body and it reduces the amount of water when they breathe it out so it keeps um, water retention within their bodies which is really really important. Now they've probably got the same sense of smell as we have um, but to them smell is very very important it bonds the pups and mums and this is why we say if you see a seal pup on the beach please don't go anywhere near it because the first thing you'll see is when the mum returns she'll flare her nostrils and you hear that snort like that okay and um she's smelling for a pup and she's also smelling the area because we think that's part and parcel of how they relocate where they've been. So a sense of smell is very important to them. And that's why it's so important to keep away from seal pups. We don't want to confuse them, okay? If we come down, if I hold my hand behind, you'll see these incredible whiskers on them. They're really, really quite thick. They're almost as thick as like you get on brooms. They're not like your cats and dogs. Now, these are called Vibrasse. And they play a very, very important role. You probably see here that the, the cheeks here seem to really, really puff out on them. And they're actually capable of moving each whisker individually. These whiskers are so, so important for them to find food. They, what they're doing is they are looking, and I'll show you on this diagram here, for the disturbances, the little eddies in the water caused by fish. So here we have a fish swimming along and just its movement causes these little eddies in the water. Just little tiny ripples and they just move those whiskers backwards and forwards just so the seal can pick it up. Now the other clever thing that these whiskers have, that if you ever got really close, and I hope you don't because they are, um, seals do bite, um, these whiskers have this wavy shape to them. This is a normal sort of whisker of a cat or dog, and this one is a seal. And it's these waves on them that actually as they're swimming along, they don't want their whiskers really vibrating just from swimming. So that wave form cuts that movement out so they can just really um, feel those movements from the fish. So they're very, very important to them. And it's been proven they're so important that um, blind seals can still successfully survive because they're um, finding their food by these vibrations in the water. And actually on the Isle of Man, we do have a blind seal that lives in Peel Harbour. You've probably seen on Facebook um, that a fisherman um, has been feeding it. But they are quite capable of surviving even if they're blind. So their whiskers are really, really important to them. 
And then we've got the mouth, okay? Now on this specimen, unfortunately, he is getting a bit old and it is getting a bit tatty. And you can see that actually what looks like teeth aren't teeth at all. They're actually the stitches on the seal pup. And um, bless, he does need a bit of attention before he falls to bits on us. So what I've done is I, um, I brought along this seal pup scale that we have just to show you their teeth because they are the most awesome design. And I can promise you once you've seen these teeth, you wouldn't be going anywhere near a seal pup anyway. Um, they can give you a really nasty bite. So if you have a look, we've got these teeth and can you see how they all curve backwards? It's really cunning design because if you're a fish, and you get trapped in that mouth, your instinct is to swim out. But it's by swimming out, you're actually driving yourself further onto those teeth of the seal. So the adaptations are absolutely amazing in seals. And um, if you have a little, the other thing we haven't talked about, and a lot of people are quite surprised about it. If you look at the side of the head, you'll see a tiny little hole here. And that's his ear. It doesn't want a sticking out here like we would have because obviously if you're swimming you're going to it's going to be a bit of air resistance uh, water resistance so you don't want that because that's going to slow you down when you're trying to catch a prey so having a really flush um, ear system like this is a lot better for you their hearing is just like ours it, it's really quite good and they do communicate they don't communicate a lot. In fact, grey seals are one of the quieter seals, but it's mainly the pups that communicate and they can communicate with the um, mum. So now we are going to have a look at the um, body shape of the seal and see how well it is adapted to its lifestyle and catching those fish that are so important to it. So we're going to have a look at the skeleton of the um, seal and see how it affects the body shape. So obviously they swim, so they've got these massive shoulder blades which are towards the front of the body. And you can see how the limbs are adapted into these flippers. You have the rib cage, just like we would have, and obviously it's the spine because they're vertebrates, and the pelvic zone here. So if we now have a look at the um, seal pup itself, we can see how this all fits in. So we have the two shoulder blades just here on either side of the front. So this is why this area is so broad. And then you've got the rib cage coming down to about here. We carry on, we have the spine coming down and this would be the pelvic zone just here. Overall, it creates this lovely streamlined shape that's so good at going through the water to catch its fish. If we carry on and have a look, you can see how the um, muscles help this body shape. So this is the top view of the seal and you can see there's massive muscles that run down along its body that help it so much with the swimming. If we move over, this is the underview of the seal and you can see these massive muscles that are attached to propel the seal along with its flippers in the water and the massive muscle groups running down its body. So here we have the front limb here and you can see how it attaches onto the body. You can see how this isn't really going to support its body weight and this is what makes them um, so ungainly when they're out of the water. Um, if you look, everyone's always really surprised at these really sharp, strong claws on it. When they haul out, they'll be hauling out over very, very slippery rocks. So they need to get a really good grip. So these claws help them. So that's the front limbs. If we carry on down the body, you'll see the back limbs. And they're facing backwards so they can get good propulsion here. The other interesting thing is between each of the digits, can you see there's webbing? So obviously this helps them with their swimming. And the other thing a lot of people don't realize is seals have a tail, quite a small one. Um, there is some debate whether they use it to steady their bodies when they're swimming, or even if they use it as some kind of rudder. So there you go, that's the anatomy of the seal.